Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to spend some time with you in the Word of God. And I want to just say thank you to our listening audience. The areas in which you have tuned into The Balance of Life are absolutely remarkable and without your support without uh, your words of encouragement without your prayers and tuning in we would not be here so I want to say thank you no matter where you are tuning in from we greatly appreciate your presence today we're going to talk about uh, stretching in order for us to fit in into our necks, we have to stretch. It is not a comfortable thing. But stretching pulls us out of our comfort zones. And we must just get to the place where God would have us to be stretching it pulls us out of unfamiliarity some things are definitely going to look familiar but for the most part we have to stretch in the Old Testament and I want to get to this because this right here is really really good I believe it is let me see Deuteronomy it is in an area where God is telling the people of Israel that he is he wants them to remember where they came from he also wants to them to remember to obey his voice so let's take a look at Deuteronomy the 11th chapter Beginning at the first verse, it says, Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments alway. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and stretched out arm. Stretched out arm means to extend. So when we're talking about stretching, we are extending. We are moving outside of our comfort zones. We are stretching out. We're moving out. Uh, another great example before I go further in Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, is the prayer of Jabaz asking to have his territory enlarged. That's a stretch. Now, that enlargement is first spiritual and then into the natural, but first it is a spiritual stretch. So if you find yourself in a time of there is a pull, there is a hunger, there is a desire to spend more time in prayer, I'm telling you that's a stretch. If you're finding that you are hungry for spending time in the Word of God than you normally are, that's a stretch. So a stretch is going beyond where you normally operate from. That's a stretch. And in order to fit in into the new area in which you are going into, into the area, some of us are already in those new areas, in those new levels, but we have to stretch to fit in. So our prayer time is no longer the same. Stretch, but be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Your time and study of the Word of God, it's time to stretch, be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. The movements that you're about to make, which is the work of God, be led by the Holy Spirit, but it's time to stretch. Many, it is time to stretch. So think about that. Think about the rubber band. The rubber band stretches outside of its normal shape to fit what it needs to fit. So we're stretching today. 
As we go back to Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, we're in the third verse. It says, And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his land. And what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord had destroyed them unto this day. So here God is saying, I'm not talking to your children because they did not experience that deliverance. I'm talking to you. You have experienced God's hand in your life. You have seen the great work of God's hand in your life. He has delivered you. He has set you free. He has healed you so that he can bring you to a place of a promise. And so he is talking to those that he had to deliver. Not the ones who benefit by being children or siblings or just connected but he is talking to you and I verse 5 says and when he did unto you in the wilderness and what he did unto you in the wilderness until ye came into this place and what he did unto Dathan and Abram, the sons of Elab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their households and their tents and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. So God did something great and mighty for Israel and he has done something great and mighty for each and every one of us. We must give an account, meaning we must acknowledge what God has truly done for us in our lives. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I can't attest for your side, but if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, on angel side, where would I be? So let's, I'm not talking about angel the elder, angel the pastor, angel the publisher, angel the author, the motivational speaker. No, no, no. I'm just talking about angel. I know if it had not been for the Lord, who delivered me, who set me free, who has healed me several times, who has given me warning to move out of the sight of danger, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? So I acknowledge that as he is bringing me into the place that he has for me. So let me read verse 5 again. It says, And what he did unto you in the wilderness until ye came into this place. In the wilderness, he let them know uh, you were in the wilderness for 40 years because you had to prove yourself. I had to prove to know what was in your heart. If you can be faithful, if you can be obedient. And so in our times of wilderness, sometimes we're in those places because we haven't proven that we can be faithful and obedient to God. Oh, I want someone to, I want somebody to come out of the wilderness. So we have to line up. That's a stretch. That's a stretch. And so if we are in a wilderness place for a very, very long time, then it it all goes back to self-examination. Can God find me faithful? Can he find me obedient? He has to prove that he knows me. I have to prove myself to him. He has to know what's in my heart. And I want to come out of the wilderness. I don't want to be in the wilderness for 40 years. No, Lord have mercy. No. Let's move forward. Verse 6 says, And when he and what he did unto Dathan, okay? Reminding them what he did. Verse 7 says, But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. You saw it. You saw it firsthand. You are the first partaker of what God said he was going to do. Because you experienced it. You prayed about it and it happened. You trusted God at his very word. And what he said came to pass. So... Why do we sometimes act like we don't know what God is capable of? We have already experienced what he is capable of. 
Verse 8 says, Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. So not only does God want us to come in and possess the land, he wants us to prolong our days. He wants us to remain in the promise. Oh, that's good right there. Do you not know some people can make it to the promise but not remain? Because they forgot how they got there. They forgot what God had done for them. They forgot who placed them there. So do not get to the promise and then lose access to the promise. Don't do that. If God said he was going to open up something to you. Open up a door for you to walk in. Whether it's constructing a new ministry, expanding ministry, a business, expanding it in your family, in your household, in your marriage, whatever it is. Increase your finances, whatever it is, healing in your body. Do not forget where you came from. Do not forget who brought you there. Do not forget who healed you. Do not forget who delivered you. Do not forget. Because just as surely as we forget, just as surely as we stop being obedient unto God, we can lessen our days in that place. And I want you to get there and I want you to be able to remain. Verse 10 says, For the land whither you go is in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt, from whence ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even until the end of the year. And it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season the, the first rain and the latter rain that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil so here God is saying I want you not only to come into this but I want you to remain but one, some, one thing that we all must take into an account is this you can't treat this like you did when you were in bondage this isn't the level you just came from this is a higher level this is a higher anointing this is new doors that are open this is new territory it is not where you came from and so it's a stretch because you can't treat it the same. You must stretch beyond your capability of what you knew. That was your last season. This is a new season. Stretch in the new season. Stretch on how to survive in this new season. I often say what we faced yesterday is not what we're going to face today. Especially if you overcame it. Now, if you didn't overcome something, you're going to face it again today. Until you overcome it. Until we get to a place that, you know what? We are persecuted on every side. We are cast down, but we're, listen, delay is not denied. We're going to go through some trials and tribulations. But remember, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So we have to learn how to overcome. We have to learn how to survive in the different seasons of our life. And that is going to come from stretching. Once again, the rubber band, it might have been created at a certain shape but it has the ability to expand 
in this walk with Christ, we must have the ability to expand and that ability, that help comes from the Holy Spirit. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to share with you our morning inspiration for today. Whether there is an upgrade, things will things work def- differently with the agenda of operating better. Although things look familiar, they are on another level, which is higher. And so it is with God. When he said, Behold, I will do a new thing, many could not adjust because it looked familiar, yet it was on another level. Some will catch this now, some will discover it later, and then others will keep looking at the familiar. Be blessed on purpose because you are. Are and our morning inspiration has been posted on the Facebook page for the balance of life. I also want to share with you that we are prepared. Let me tell you something we are prepared to have our virtual writing workshop September the 2nd and the 16th. As I mentioned on yesterday, we're going to expand in a few areas. One of those areas is we are going to release information about that virtual workshop via our radio ministry. And then we will also, if you are interested, please email us at thebalanceoflife1 at yahoo.com so that you can obtain a link for the video version of the virtual workshop. We're going to discuss how to take your expertise, your teaching, and put it into workbook format. We're also going to share with you tools how to take from your teaching material and put them into question format. This will benefit your workbook, whether it is for business or ministry turning it into a teaching tool which will also provide you with residual income long after the conference long after the seminars and it will also help you prepare in your next Bible study teaching as a bonus we are also going to include how to add different uh, promotional products to go along with your workbook we have gone ahead and released some writing journals that are companion to books we already have published so so excited about that once again the dates for the virtual writing workshop are September the 2nd and the 16th for more information on how you can attend please email us today at the balance of life one at yahoo.com all right so we're talking about stretching In order to fit into your next level, you must stretch. And if you would take a look at, say, a rubber band. Some rubber bands are small. Some rubber bands are large. But they have the ability to expand. That is how we should be we should have the ability to expand whenever we are being elevated spiritually through wisdom knowledge and understanding through a revelation of God whenever he promotes us spiritually which means more spiritual authority we must have the ability to stretch Some are finding themselves in in stretching areas such as your prayer life. You're finding yourself praying for areas and in in areas that you normally don't. That is a spiritual stretch. As long as you allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, you will not fail. That is the key. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. 
in your time of prayer, in your time of studying the Word of God, so that you can minister, rightly divide the Word of Truth. When you receive a revelation of the knowledge of God, as long as you follow the Holy Spirit, who is going to reveal what He hears from heaven, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you will not fail. Scripture does tell us that if we allow those things, we talked about this on last week, adding to our faith. When we add to our faith virtue and temperance and patience and and long, when we add charity, we'll never be barren nor unfruitful. And the work of the Lord. So yes it's uncomfortable. Yes it's, it's spending a little bit more time. And in, in areas of scripture. That you normally. Do not. Study in. Why? Because God wants to stretch you. He wants to stretch your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He wants to stretch you. There is a message that he wants to declare to his people upon the earth at different times and to different audiences. And in order to do so that effectively, we must be stretched. You know, you have some people, they have their same sermons that they go to. And they don't stretch beyond that. They stay in that comfort zone of study. So every time you hear them, they're in the same area. They haven't stretched. You have some people that have the same area of stretch when it comes to their time of testimony. They're not stretching. We must stretch if we're going to do anything for the kingdom of God if we are going to participate in the will of God and I do say that participate because it's all about choice we have a choice on whether we or not we are going to participate we have a choice I have a choice you have a choice God does not force anything on anybody. We have a choice. We have a choice to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so I say to you, stretch. Come out of your comfort zone. Let's go higher. Let's go deeper in the word of God. There is more that God wants to say. Jesus said it. He said, there is much more that I want to share with you, but you can't bear it all. You can't handle it all. You can't. But the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. He will reveal unto you. He will not speak of himself. But he will share what he hears. And that calls for stretching. That calls for more revelation. That calls for more knowledge. That calls for more wisdom. Understanding. Counsel. That calls for more. And the reason why we have to stretch. At portions of a time. Because we can't handle all of that. You ever stretched a a rubber band too far out and it pops? Mm-hmm. Then you got to get another. You have to get a bigger rubber band. Mm-hmm. So those teeny tiny rubber bands, they're not going to hold a whole lot. They can stretch according to their capacity and according to their ability to hold. So I guess, listen, what size rubber band are you? What's your ability? What's what's your stretching ability? What's your capability to hold? 
because clearly what God is saying unto the children of Israel over in Deuteronomy the 11th chapter listen where you came from this isn't that over here I need you to stretch I need you to learn some new things I need you to expand your knowledge and and when we come into these new areas it's unfamiliar to us we don't know anything about this new area we we haven't been here before. That's what he's saying to them. You haven't been here before. You don't even take care of this land the way you would the last land. Let's read verse 10 again. Deuteronomy 11. Let's read that. Let's take a look at that again. It says, For the land whither thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from which ye came out, where thou sowedest thy seed, and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain from heaven. This is a whole new thing. So I can't take care of this level of anointing the way that I did the last level of anointing. I need to stretch. Everyone who had access to that level of anointing, they're not going to have access to this level of anointing. Those who went with me through those open doors and, and that last level, they, everyone might not be able to go because they don't have the ability to stretch. Now, we don't look down on them. We pray for them that in due season they do come up, that they arrive. But this is this is a time to stretch. This is a time to grow in your knowledge. This is a time to expand. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you in prayer. Allow him to do it. And once again, when we allow him to do it, we will never fail. We will never go wrong. As long as you know that you know that you know that you are following the will of God, you will not be barren. You will not be unfruitful and you will not fail. When you allow God to lead and guide you by the Holy Spirit, you are in the will of God. But it takes some stretching. So it's going to take some times of when you are uh, tugged upon to get up and to pray. Yes, it might be in the middle of the day and you are sitting in your office and you are at your desk and something hits your spirit. Guess what? Pray within. Mm-hmm. That's right. Pray within. When you get a break... And that word that fell into your spirit, look up that scripture, read that word, meditate on the word of God day and night, keep the word of God upon your heart, meditate on it, that you sin, or not, uh, uh, sin not against God, meditate on the word of God, keep the word in your heart. There's a lot of scripture, there is a lot of word, and yes we do have our Go to scriptures. Mine is Psalms 91. Psalms 91. That is my go to. But I believe it was a couple of months ago. Because I have certain scripture texts that I use for spiritual warfare. But a couple of months ago. Sometime last year. And I'm saying a couple of months ago. But sometime last year. I was led to some other scriptures for spiritual warfare. To add to my arsenal that's right oh yeah I had to stretch and guess what he's stretching me again he stretched me last week with another area something that he wants me to look at as a matter of fact that stretching came in the month of July when I was in Florida I shared that three things that uh, was brought to my attention and he keeps bringing it back to me understanding the pressure keeping your composure and the delay was for me those are stretching things especially keeping your composure understanding the pressure it's time to stretch according to your stretchability your capability 
And remember, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. So don't say you can't do it. Because as long as you have Jesus Christ, you can. I love you. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow for Midday Bible Study.